Well, Zach, it looks like 2011 is the year of the minivan, with almost all of the main players receiving some pretty major updates. The best-selling vans are the Dodge Grand Caravan along with the cousin Chrysler Town & Country, which received new exterior tweaks and major interior modifications. Not just the most popular vans, they're also the third best-selling vehicles overall in the country. And for 2011, they also get new engines and transmissions. Toyota recently released their all-new Sienna, which has a choice of four-cylinder, V6, and even all-wheel drive. Nissan is even back in the picture with a stylish Quest, and Kia has restyled the Sedona van. With all of this competition, Honda really wants to stand out at the top of the pack by creating a minivan that people really want to buy rather than one that they begrudgingly have to buy. I would agree with that. And one way of setting yourself apart is with styling. There's a few things we've got to point out. This lightning bolt design behind the rear sliding door is meant to differentiate the Odyssey, making it look less boxy. It certainly looks unique, and it provides a bigger side window for third row passengers. But the rail that the sliding door sits on is now accented, making the side look unfinished. Other manufacturers like Toyota and Dodge have done a better job of hiding this rail, where Honda highlights it. On the base model, there's no power sliding door. With every new minivan introduction, there's always an advancement on old themes, and one theme seems to be folding seats into the floor. Now, the very first van to have seats that retracted into the floor was the original Odyssey, way back when it was a very small four-cylinder minivan. Honda's back at it again. Watch how simple it is to put the back seats into the floor. Grab the strap, one flick of the wrist, and away it goes. The second row of heavily bolstered seats slide easily forward to allow access to the third row. No other manufacturer has emulated the Dodge Stow and Go system for hiding the second row of seats. I guess most buyers use their van to move people rather than large cargo. The rear entertainment screen on the Turing model stretches 16.2 inches across, similar to the Sienna's. The interior of the Odyssey has been cleaned up. It's no longer overrun and cluttered with buttons. Now, it might look a lot cleaner, but gotta be honest, it's not as simple to use as a lot of the other products out there. Honda's relying on the same navigation and radio unit in all of their products, and personally, I think it's a bit complex. Now, there's no Bluetooth offered as standard equipment, but the fit and finish is fantastic, and I would definitely place it at the top of the minivan pack. Power and handling are usually not key deciding factors when people shop for a minivan. It's usually practicality and price. But having a road-capable minivan has certainly been the focus of most of the manufacturers with all the latest introductions. The Sienna has a sport model and the Grand Caravan is much more controlled and entertaining than the last model. Now on this front, the Odyssey is a bit of a carryover in terms of power. The 3.5 liter V6 produces 248 horsepower. Now compare that to the 290 horsepower from the Grand Caravan and 266 horsepower from the Toyota Sienna. The Odyssey is offered with a 5-speed automatic on all but the top model, which gets a 6-speed. Why the 6-speed isn't across the entire line is a bit puzzling. What has been improved is better airflow over the new exterior styling for better fuel efficiency and lower noise. The lower, wider stance and improved suspension provides a stable, less top-heavy feel. You would think that with the lower roof line, it would feel much smaller in here, but that's not the case at all. The Odyssey still feels like a big minivan. Now, thank goodness that on the top of the line trim, it comes standard with a backup camera and rear and front parking sensors. This big backup camera in the center of the dash is only available with the navigation system and is exclusive on the top model. The mid-range vans only get a small backup camera in the rear view mirror. The Honda Odyssey starts at just under 30,000 and the top of the line fully loaded model comes in at around 47, which is perfect for on the go middle class families. Now it is surprising that Honda wasn't a bit more aggressive with their pricing because the Sienna has a lower starting price. On the topic of Toyota, their van is still offered with all-wheel drive, the only van with this option. On the other hand, Honda has one of the most fuel-efficient vans with 12 liters per 100k in the city and 7.1 on the highway. 
Auto Lacey, Odyssey, is it the top van? You know what, Zach, we can talk about that in just a second, but let me start off by telling you what I like about this minivan. First of all, I mentioned it before, but the interior is incredibly quiet, and on the highway, it's very, very smooth. I love how easy it is to fold that third row of seats down, and I really like the improvements on the interior. However, that takes me to my dislike, Zach. I don't like the exterior styling on it at all. And it would have been nice if there were a few options, especially all-wheel drive. Would have been great for Canadian winters. All right, my likes. I love the interior. It's much better, more, more cohesive design on the inside. The old van had buttons thrown everywhere. It's very streamlined now. It's also a quiet cabin, especially as you mentioned, when you're driving on the highway. The seats are very padded and comfortable for all three rows and handling has been improved. It's got that lower roof line now. It seems a little bit more planted and doesn't roll around in the corners like you expect most minivans to. On the downside, emitting Bluetooth on the base model is a bit of a faux pas in this day and age with all these cell phone laws. Why don't they just put the six-speed transmission across the entire line instead of having to pay for the top model to get that? Now styling. Lacey, you're kind of adamant you're not too attracted to it, but what I found is when a new funky style comes out, it looks odd when you first see it, but when it becomes part of the vehicle landscape, you kind of get used to it. So Lacey is the Odyssey top van. Well, Zach, if you're looking for a minivan that's a little bit more luxurious, I mean, the Honda's a good pick. However, I still think the Sienna looks a lot better, a lot cooler, if I can use the word. And if you're talking about value, I'd still go with the Dodge Grand Caravan. But at the end of the day, they're still just minivans. And with the minivan, you either love them or you're kind of forced into buying one because you need the functionality of it. Absolutely. Want to see how the new Honda Odyssey compares to other minivans? See all the reviews at drivingtelevision.com.